As Muzan set his family off, he walked towards an alleyway. On the way, three people were walking by. One of them clearly had made a bit too much to be drunk. He accidentally bumped into Muzan, even though it was clearly the man's fault. He said, Hey, what are you doing, mister? Muzan just stood there for a second. Apologies, Muzan said bluntly before starting to walk away. But the man stopped him. Where are you going? The man said, kind of aggressive. I'm terribly sorry, but I'm a, in a bit of a hurry. Muzan said again, very blunt. What the hell did you, what the hell you say to me? Look at you all decked out in your fancy pants clothes. You're pissing me off. You and your stupid pale face. You look like you're about to fall over dead. The man said aggressively, then mockingly. The man's comments sent Muzan into a bit of a rage. His eyes stared, shakily violent. Hey, aren't you going to say anything? Or did you just choke? The man w said in a mocking manner. Muzan lifted his fist, slamming him into the brick wall, instantly killing him. Then the taller man that the man was with went up to fight him next, but Muzan kicked him into the air, and the man was killed. All that was left was a woman who was terrified. Muzan crouched down to the woman's level and asked, So does my complex look all unhealthy to you? He, s s he put his hand on her cheek. Does my face seem unusually pale? Do I look sickly? Does it appear that I'm not long for this world? Do you fear for your life? He asked the terrified woman, holding extreme eye contact. You can't, couldn't possibly be more wrong. I'm very much alive and not far from perfection. He said he then held his pointer finger in the near, in the, near his mouth, like you would tell when you tell someone to be quiet. Then his nail grew longer and dark. He then stabbed his finger into the woman's skull, letting out, a, <laughs> letting blood flow into her. What do you think would happen if I gave you a constant stream of my blood? He remorsely asked. The woman's body was making a lot of twitching. The human body is unable to withstand such a rapid transformation. Its cells are destroyed. Then the woman was soon nothing but mush. Muzan stood up and snapped his finger, summoning two demons. There are two demons there, one with Hanafu earrings and a girl with hair-colored hair, eye-colored eyes. Bring me the head of the one wearing the Hanafu earrings and take the one with the hair-colored hair and eye-colored eyes. Don't you dare do anything to her. Just bring her to me. Got that? Muzan ordered. Yes, one of them answered. As you wish, said another. After they le left, Muzan had a bit of a flashback of a demon slayer similar to Tanjiro, just with longer hair and a different colored... Come on. I can't read. Hanafu earrings. He whispered to himself darkly. Then he had another flashback of a girl he saw. In the blood, he saw a poor from her cheek. He badly wanted a taste, even just a drop. He was going to do anything in his power to make her his. Your POV. When we arrived back near the Udan cart, the man was scolding Tanjiro because he dropped his Udan bowl on the floor. Tanjiro apologized and asked the man for another one. After having Tanjiro promised to eat it, he came over to me and asked if I would like one as well which I said yes. The man wanted his sister to eat one, but Tanjiro stepped in and said that he would like two. The man made our food. I was slowly eating mine, enjoying it, when Tanjiro was... Shut up. I don't care. Sorry, not you guys. I love you guys so much. Kiss, kiss. <laughs> Shoving it down his throat like he was starving. I giggled. He finished quickly, and I took out... It took about a minute or two to finish mine. He thanked the man for the meal and walked off. We wa we were walking and saw the boy with the mint green hair. He walked over to him. Hi, were you waiting for us? I asked, and he slightly blushed. I'm here on special orders to bring you three back with me, he said, seemingly slightly annoyed. 
I could have just followed your son to find you, Tanjiro said, with Nezuko right next to him. Our hiding place is protected by a con concealment spell. You could have never have found it, he explained. I assume it must be his blood demon art. Oh, that's pretty smart, I said out loudly to myself. Before we go, he said as he pointed at Nezuko, Did you know that girl with you is a demon and not to, and not much to look at? He said. Chandra took a second to understand what he meant. Then he turned to Nezuko, realizing he was talking about her. You got to be out of your mind. Who would like, who would look at Nezuko and think she's ugly? She was a beautiful girl in our whole town. You know that? Tanjiro yelled. Then we followed the boy to his, to his and his demoness's hideout. All the way, Tanjiro was yelling at him about Nezuko. We were in front of the dead end. I know what this is. It's a stupid maze. That's the only explanation. You just need to behold Nezuko's beauty when she isn't wearing this ugly thing. Tanjiro was yelling as the boy walked through the wall. I followed him, Nezuko, and Tanjiro did as well. We were now in front of a big house. Pay attention. Make sh sure not to offend the lady in any way. The boy said then he was in Tanjiro's face. Because I couldn't care less what happens to you. I only brought you here because she insisted on it. He said sternly. Uh, okay, sure. Tanjiro replied. Don't worry, I'm sure he'll get along just fine. I smiled, trying to lighten the mood. As soon, we we soon walked in and met up with a lady. We're sorry, we left everything for you to take care of. So how is she doing? Tanjiro said. She'll make a full recovery, but her husband has been locked up. He's restrained in the basement, the lady said. Isn't it isn't it difficult treating humans all the bl with all the blood? Tanjiro asked. The boy was hit. The boy was hit. Ta the boy hit Tanjiro. He growled. Is that what you think? She chokes back her own drool when she treats a human because demons can't control themselves? He retortedly asked. Sorry, Tanjiro said. Did I intrude myself? Apologies. My name is... Oh, shoot. My name is Tamio, and this is Yushiro. I hope you three can be friends, she said, even though it's pretty clear that he doesn't like us. We soon followed her into a room. He, she told us how she herself is a demon, but she adjusted her body, so she did, doesn't need much human blood, only a small proportion. She told us how Yushiro only needs a little bit since she turned him into a demon this part shocked me for years muzan was the only one who could turn hu humans into demons miss tomio said it took her 200 years to figure out how to change just one person two 200 years it took you 200 years before you figured out how to transform just one person how old are you miss tomio tanjiro yelled then Yoshu just punched him. It was understand why it was rude for a man to ask that to a woman. You should know better than to ask a lady her age. Yoshu oh yelled, then poking his chest a bunch. Yoshu, if you hit that boy again, I'll make you regret it. Miss Tamiyo said. Then Yoshu jumped back to his spot. Yes, ma'am, he said. She looked at me and start, stared at me for five seconds and said, Did you notice that you have a cut on your cheek? She said, pointing to her own cheek. I gasped and covered. Oh, I forgot that was there. Sorry about that. I asked, getting embarrassed. Would you like me to patch it up? She said. I nodded, and she made a motion with her hand to come over to her. So I did, and I sat next to her. She co continued to talk with Tanjo, and he asked if there was a way to turn a demon back into a human. She said there was. Tanjiro quickly got up and, while saying, Please tell me how. But she stopped by Yushu flipping him over while saying, You keep your distance from Lady Tamiyo. She finished patching me up while got some of my hair behind my ear, like a loving manner. 
but I didn't mind. She looked at Yoshiro. Yoshiro? She said with an angry aura around her. Yoshiro quickly sat in his original spot. I'm sorry, I only threw him, not hit him. Neither is acceptable, she responded, and then he replied with a right. Thank you for patching me up, Miss Tamio, I said, bowing slightly. It, it is no trouble. I just hope it doesn't scar. It, it would be a shame. You're very beautiful, angelic even, she said, giving me a smile. I blushed at this compliment. Thank you, I quietly said. Can you please tell me how? Tanjiro asked when he sat up again. There is always some kind of medicine or aid, no matter the wound or element. I don't know how to turn a demon back into a human yet, but there must be a way. I, and I promise we are going to find it. We are... What? Delicilitant in a stand, oh my God, estimating such a treatment. Towards that end, I'd like to ask the two of you to do something for me. I started praying, really close attention. In order to discover a cure, the first step is to study the blood of several different types of demons, which means I have two favors to ask you. First, I'd like to study your sister's blood. Second, I need more samples. I'd like you to get blood that are closely related to Kibutsuji as possible, she said. I realized that she must have meant the 12 Kizuki, more or less an upper rank, which could prove to be difficult, but we'll do our best. What do you two think? Are these, are these requests acceptable or not pleasant? She asked. I didn't even have to think about it. My whole life is helping and healing people. Yes, I'll do it, I answered. If that, if it's really the only way, then I will also do it as well, Tanjiro answered. Besides, if you research all the blood and find a cure, then it won't just be Nesuko, will it? A whole lot of other people could be saved too, Tanjiro said with a smile. I ran over and hugged him. That's right, we are going to save people and help them. I know we can do it. I said, smiling, my brightest because of how happy I am. That's when I felt something dangerous. Get down, 